you have a constitutional right, if you have a First Amendment right in one state, you should have it in the other state. If you have a Second Amendment right in one state, you should have it in the other state. Because these are these are rights that are enshrined in our National Bill of Rights. Yep. We are the Armed Attorneys. Today we're talking about a really interesting case out of the state of Massachusetts that may have nationwide implications, dare I even say it, national reciprocity. It's very, very exciting. There's a lot to it. But before we begin, share your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And we got to ask y'all, confirm that you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, YouTube has been doing some things that have monkeyed around. Just confirm that you're subscribed. We've heard from a whole lot of folks that have been unsubscribed. So we'd really ask that you check that out. And our friends over at Sonoran Desert Institute has sponsored this video. SDI.edu slash armed hyphen attorneys for online gunsmithing and armor courses. We have a really exciting case out of the state of Massachusetts. What's going on? It's very exciting. And what makes it more exciting is that, of course, we expect pro-Second Amendment, pro-Bruin decisions from, you know, Texas, Oklahoma, Georgia, you know, your traditional gun-loving states. This one comes from Massachusetts. So it's always exciting wherever you get one from uh, deep in the heart of anti-gun territory. And basically what happened was an individual from New Hampshire, a lawful gun owner, in fact, a license holder from New Hampshire, merely ventured across the border into Massachusetts. He had his handgun with him. Massachusetts authorities found that he was in possession of this handgun, arrested him, and charged him with violating Massachusetts law, potentially setting him up to be a convicted felon for this. But his lawyers very smartly filed a motion to dismiss, claiming that the law was unconstitutional on its face and the law was unconstitutional as applied to him. The court opinion addressed mostly the as applied issue, and they ruled that it was, in fact, a violation of his Second Amendments to prosecute him for this offense, and they dismissed the case. Yeah, so if you wanted to check this out, this is Commonwealth v. Dean F. Donnell, 2211CR2835. This is their Massachusetts general law, their chapter 269, section 10A. And essentially, that's their general prohibition on possessing a firearm uh, outside of your house or your business without a license. That's what they're saying that he violated. Now, the court looks at these three challenges, the facial challenge, the as-applied challenge, and they make an equal protection um, claim as well. And the court does a really good job going through this, and so it's worth worth discussing but I think really surprising. First off, we're in Massachusetts and we get a pro to a ruling. Oh, yeah, which I always want to point this out, the irony that Massachusetts is such an anti-gun state because that's where the American Revolution started. And the American Revolution started over an effort by the British to engage in gun confiscation. Yeah. That was the basis of the Battle of Lexington and Concord. And so for a state that is so, or Commonwealth, that is so so rooted in the protection of an individual's right to possess a firearm uh, to, of course, do a complete 180 and become such a hardcore anti-gun state is just, it, it really boggles my mind. Yeah. So the first thing the court does, uh, you know, the court reached the right opinion, so I'm not going to be too ticky tacky here, but they do say that the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association uh, v. Bruin case is a two-step standard. No, it's a one-step test. We look at the conduct. Um, if it's covered by the Second Amendment, then it's presumptively protected and the burden shifts over the 100% over the government to prove based on the text of the Second Amendment as informed by history and tradition uh, that that's something that the government would regulate at the time. Now, our issue before us is, is um, regulating non-residents carry, you know, is, is there any kind of history or tradition in the Second Amendment with regard to regulating that? And the Commonwealth does a really piss poor job based on the arguments that the court puts forward, it sounds like they really didn't put any evidence of that up. No, no, no. They didn't. Uh, they were just, re they were, they were resting on their laurels that no judge in Massachusetts would ever find that any gun law passed by Massachusetts would violate the second amendment. However, just to show what a sea change this is and how long it took uh, to do this, one of the very first cases that, th that this opinion cites is an opinion that was issued earlier this year. Commonwealth versus Garada, in which this court, in citing that opinion, said, in fact, the Supreme Judicial Court in Commonwealth versus Garada recognized for the first time that the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution guarantees an individual's right to possess and carry a firearm outside of his home. Now, 
this is very important because this shows how long the courts in Massachusetts had resisted recognizing an individual right. I mean, Heller did that back in 2008, and yet it's taken the courts in Massachusetts that long to recognize it. Now, granted, Heller said you have an individual right in your home. Uh, Now, Bruin says you have an individual right outside your home, but it, it just goes to show how slow to act the Massachusetts courts are. And we're happy to see this progress. Yeah. And, and this just goes to laziness of prosecutors in this case. Um, They, I don't know where they got the idea, but they're relying on kind of old standards for evaluating, you know, whether a substantial governmental interest was forwarded by the, the, this law. That's not the test that we use anymore. Don't really know why they raised that. The court dismisses that very quickly saying, hey, that's not persuasive. That's not the standard we're operating under. Yeah, they continue to argue that uh, having a firearm was a privilege, sure, not a right. And so when you've got prosecutors of that mindset, that when you engage in your constitutional rights and that is somehow a privilege that the state can control, that's not a good, that's not a good state to be in. No, and then the court, you know, in its analysis, gives a really, really, I think, illustrative example of how absurd this law would be. They give the example of a mall that's on the border and how a person would be lawfully carrying in one part of the mall. But if they walked over to a different section of the mall, which happens to land in the state of Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. they would then be transformed into a felon. I think that's a really good way of just pointing out the absurdity of all this. Oh, yeah. And keep in mind, that's not a hypothetical. I'm sure that there are plenty of New Hampshireites that go to this mall that, you know, it just goes to show you how a law in one place will violate your rights in somewhere else. Because if there were New Hampshireites who could lawfully engage in carrying, they previously were prohibited from going to that mall in that state because of the threat that they could wander over into the Massachusetts area of the mall and be in violation of the law. Yeah, but that's where the pretzels are. So that shows that, you know, that one state's unconstitutional activity uh, can affect your rights to carry in other lawful places. And just as a side note, that's always been my argument about whenever here in Texas, of course, we have the prohibited places and the prohibited places. It's it's the fact is, is that it doesn't just affect you in the prohibited place. It affects your right to carry a gun while getting to the prohibited place yep. and while returning from the prohibited place. Not to mention your car getting broken into while you're inside the prohibited place and your firearm getting stolen. Exactly. And so people just fail to observe those uh, those those consequences. And so the question that I'm sure a lot of folks have is, you know, is this binding precedent on, you know, the whole state of Massachusetts or, you know, maybe even the rest of the country? The short answer is no. This is out of a district court. Um, Could we see the government here appeal the case? Yeah, I imagine that they are going to say, hey, judge, you abused your discretion here. I don't think that they're going to win on that kind of appeal. But this this opinion is limited to not only just this jurisdiction, uh, but we saw those three arguments made and the court relied on a as applied challenge. So we have three challenges here. You know, if this if this court said, hey, this thing is unconstitutional on its face, that might that would apply to everybody potentially in the state of Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it was just applied to this specific defendant. But the court makes some very, very good points yep. in its opinion. Uh, the fact that people shouldn't lose their national constitutional rights whenever yep. they venture into other states. If you have a constitutional right, if you have a First Amendment right in one state, you should have it in the other state. If you have a Second Amendment right in one state, you should have it in the other state. Because these are these are rights that are enshrined in our National Bill of Rights. Yep. And there wasn't a whole lot of discussion about it, but there is brief mention of the full faith and credit clause. Um, I always thought that that would be a very, very good argument going forward for, hey, every state, if you got a license or permit issued by your state, I mean, what is holding these other states back from recognizing these licenses? What they've relied on is the fact that uh, this has been based on a license. And, you know, to touch on uh, one of my earlier points is that, unfortunately, courts have always ruled that anything that the state can license is considered a privilege. Yep. And that's what they've always done with the driver's licenses. That's why you don't technically have a right to have a driver's license because it is a privilege. That is an opinion I have always fundamentally disagreed with. However, that's the way the courts view it, because oftentimes courts view us as their subjects 
uh, not as citizens. Yeah, but I do think even though this is not binding precedent on any other court in the, in the United States, it is persuasive authority. And we see this, you know, whenever we have a case of first impression, this is the first time that we've seen an opinion issued um, on this specific issue. When you have cases of first impression, if this were to arise in, let's say, somewhere on the West Coast, California, Washington, Oregon, it wouldn't surprise me if this case is cited in a different jurisdiction as, hey, look, uh, this is what's happening across the country. Keep in mind, all of these hardcore anti-gun states are bordered by very pro-gun states. So uh, there's a great opportunity for, you know, for citizens of these other states to, you know, venture into the anti-gun states and put their statutes to the exact same test that uh, the Massachusetts statute faced. Yeah, but the uncomfortable part of challenging a lot of these gun laws is when someone gets charged with a crime. That's what happened in this case, charged with a felony out of state. Never a good time, expensive, uh, but this is how we see these things rolled back. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. Please check your subscriptions. YouTube's monkeying around. And until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys. What was I? I don't want to, all right, let me, because I want to tamper expectations just a little bit, and I'll pass it off to you. So Why is everybody going to the moon right now? All right, let's film this. Ready? <clears throat> okay. You, All right. You kind of missed. Did it. you read this? I did read it. Okay. It's good. Okay.